I keep my guns locked in a safe. Then there's no fucking protection! <laughs> Someone comes into the house, you're like, wait there, fuckface. <laughs> oh, you've come to the wrong house here, buddy boy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm gonna fuck you up. Okay. Is it 32 to the left or 32 to the right? Your mother's birthday? Why the fuck would I know your fucking mother's birthday? Maybe if you didn't leave the window open because it's too hot in here, we wouldn't be getting fucking murdered right now. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Welcome to my channel, Flavor. The flavor today is Jim Jeffries on gun control, part one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for any future videos. So, without any further ado, let's take a look at Jim Jeffries, part one of gun control. Now, before I start saying this, I want to say this, right? I believe in your right as Americans to have guns. I'm not trying to stop you from having guns. All I'm saying is this is my personal belief on the opinion. My opinion on the... Oh, it doesn't matter. I don't like guns. <laughs> right? I'm going to say some things that are just facts, right? In Australia, we, we had guns, right? Right up until 1996. And in 1996, Australia had the biggest massacre on Earth. Still hasn't been beaten. Um, <laughs> Now, after that, they banned the guns. Now, in the 10 years before Port Arthur, there was 10 massacres. Since the gun ban in 1996, there hasn't been a single massacre since. I don't know how or why this happened. Uh, maybe it was a coincidence, right? Coincidence. Now, please understand that I understand that Australia and America are two vastly different cultures with different people, right? I get it. In Australia, we had the biggest massacre on Earth. The Australian government went, that's it. No more guns. And we all went, and we all went, yeah, right then, that seems fair enough. That really. <laughs> <laughs> seems fair enough. <laughs> now, in America, you have the Sandy Hook massacre where little tiny children died, and your government went, maybe we'll get rid of the big guns? <laughs> <laughs> the big guns. And 50% of you went, fuck you, don't take my guns! Don't take my guns! So here's, here's where it gets confusing, right? Now, as I said, I'm all for your Second Amendment rights. I think you should be able to have guns. It's in your constitution. What I am not for is bullshit arguments and lies. There is one argument and one argument alone for having a gun, and this is the argument. Fuck off. I like guns. <laughs> it's not the best argument, but it's all you've got. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with saying, I, I like something, don't take it away from me. But don't give me this other bullshit. The main one is, I need it for protection. I need to protect me, I need to protect my family. <laughs> really? Is that why they're called assault rifles? Is it? Never heard of these fucking protection rifles you speak of? <laughs> protection? What the fuck are you talking about? You, you have a gun in your house, they, you're 80% more likely to use that gun on yourself <laughs> than to shoot someone else. And people think, well, that'd never happen to me. You don't know that, because you know what? From time to time, we all get sad. <laughs> <laughs> One day you're happy, then you're sad, and then... Oh, oh, was... <laughs> <laughs> Protection. I had a break-in in Manchester, England, where I was tied up, I had my head cut, they threatened to rape my girlfriend, they came through the window with a machete and a hammer, and Americans always go, well, imagine if you had a gun. And I'm like, all right. I was naked at the time. <laughs> I wasn't wearing my holster. I wasn't staring at the window, waiting for cunts with machetes to come through. Like, what world do you live in where you're constantly fucking ready? <laughs> you 
You have guns because you like guns. That's why you go to gun conventions. That's why you read gun magazines. None of you give a shit about the home security. None of you go to home security conventions. None of you read Padlock Monthly. None of you have a Facebook picture of you behind a secure door going, fucking yeah. <laughs> Like, you're going to be ready if someone comes into your house. You have it at all fucking time. By the way, most people who are breaking into your house just want your fucking TV. <laughs> you think that people are coming to murder your family? How many fucking enemies do you have? <laughs> Jeez, you think a lot of yourself if you think everyone's coming to murder you. <laughs> See, if you have it readily available, it becomes unsafe. You have it in your bedside table. One of your kids picks it up. Thinks it's a toy, shoots another one of your kids. Happens every fucking day. But people go, that'll never happen in my house. Because I'm a responsible gun owner. I keep my guns locked in a safe. Then there's no fucking protection! <laughs> Someone comes into the house, you're like, wait there, fuckface. <laughs> oh, you've come to the wrong house here, buddy boy. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'm going to fuck you up. Okay. Is it 32 to the left or 32 to the right? Your mother's birthday? Why the fuck would I know your fucking mother's birthday? Maybe if you didn't leave the window open because it's too hot in here, we wouldn't be getting fucking murdered right now. <laughs> I find the NRA to be hard work. But the fact that they always think the answer is more guns. After Sandy Hook happened, the NRA said, and I quote, None of this would have happened if the teachers had guns. Jeez. I, I think they're forgetting what school was like. <laughs> did, did anyone remember that casual teacher that used to, whenever she came on the school, that relief teacher came, you and your friends would see her and go, oh, we're going to make her cry. <laughs> and then she'd stand in front of the class with a bit of chalk on her hands would be shaking. And you go, you're never getting married, are you? <laughs> never going to happen to you. Then she gets back to her 1967 Volkswagen Beetle. She'll be crying over the steering wheel. Just, why don't they like me? Let's give that cut a gun and see how things work out. <laughs> and then they go, oh, well, answer to that, we'll just add more guns. They go, we'll put an armed security guard at every school across America. Yeah, that'll work out. The average security guard in America earns $16 an hour. Not a lot of wiggle room to be a fucking hero. <laughs> Someone comes onto the school and... <laughs> and you've got Kevin. <laughs> now, I'm sure Kevin's shit hot at Call of Duty, but it might not fucking cut it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand that when I'm doing this joke in this room, 50% of you agree with me, 50% of you don't agree with me, and I do respect the people who don't agree with me, don't think I don't. Out uh, of the 50% that don't agree with me, 20% of those people are smart enough to realise this is a comedy show and it's not to be taken seriously, and they're laughing along because it's just funny jokes, right? And then the next 20% are sort of phased out a little bit and looking around going, I wonder how they got that chandelier up there. <laughs> and then... There's the last 10% and they're fucking furious. <laughs> right now in this room and the people watching at home, 10% of you are fucking seething. Just... <laughs> and for a couple of reasons. First reason, I'm making good points. <laughs> making good points anyway i hope you enjoyed it part two to come soon don't forget to like comment subscribe and hit the notification bell for any future videos until part two deuces